You're in the right place. You're over here, over there. Hello and welcome to Over Here, Over There, your podcast across borders where we bring the world closer together. I'm Claudia Köstler. And I'm Dan Harris. And today we have a special session for you about the pick of the VP candidate for the Democratic Party. Thank you for joining us on such a short notice, but the U.S. election has just kicked up a notch, hasn't it? As reported by various media sources, the candidate for the Democratic Party, Kamala Harris, is supposed to have picked her running mate. And it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? At least from my perspective overseas, Tim Baltz. Who is this guy, Dan? Tim Waltz is the governor of Minnesota, mm -hmm. and he's got quite a, a good resume. He was a school teacher, football coach. He also served in the military, in the National Guard, for like 24 years. And he went into Congress for a number of years on the House side. And then he became governor, and I think it was in 2018. So he's got quite a good background. And he's a Midwesterner. He has good communication skills. In fact, he's the one who termed the, the Republicans being weird. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot to get into. He's relatively unknown outside of democratic politics. And I would say democratic politics in the Midwest. A lot of Democrats don't even know much about Tim Waltz mm -hmm. themselves. So this is a bit of a learning curve for us all. I have to admit that just a few days ago, I didn't have Waltz on the radar at all. But that changed, of course, because of one word. You've mentioned it before. He brought the Q weird into the election campaign. Um, as far as I remember, Waltz was the first to mock Donald Trump and his people as just weird. And that is in quotation marks. Something that went viral and many have since jumped on that bandwagon. The Republican election campaign, they were able to dominate the headlines quite a bit with their attacks. But now the Democrats seem to have turned the tide a bit by focusing on the somehow more crazy, bizarre sides rather than the dangerous sides of the other candidate. So do you think that was a clever move by design to bring in the cute weird or something that came just out of the spur of a moment? Will that have a lasting impact on voters? Because it seems like a momentum. Yeah, I think it was not by design. I think it just happened. And it happened, it originated with Tim Waltz. And he wrote that and he expressed it so succinctly that it stuck and it went viral. And I think he really captured the zeitgeist of how, how people who were anti-Trump were feeling. We know all about the trials and tribulations uh, on the legal side of Trump, all his court cases, uh, his corruption, things like that. Then J.D. Vance came along, his opposite VP on the GOP side, saying some really strange things, especially some misogynistic or things that really riled up the Democratic base and also Republicans and independents as well. It just seemed very weird what he was saying about how women need to be controlled, you know, their reproductive health and their position in the family and, and, and in the workforce. And so Tim Waltz well, really we captured, he really... Say, I had our, my say on that. Yes, you did. Uh, well, but, That's, so I should... please check out the other episode if you haven't listened yet to it. <laughs> I was remiss. I was remiss in not reminding people about that. So I should have done that. It was so eloquently said in the episode we just published uh, of yours. So he is a formidable communicator. And I think what really is impressive with him is that he's done this. He's really risen to fame over the last two weeks. So he must have been doing something right. It must have been very impressive and made a great impression on Kamala Harris. The word to me for him and Kamala Harris, as far as their relationship goes, from a political point of view, is balance. She's uh, a West Coast Californian politician. He's from the Midwest. And between them, there's balance. Now, is that enough? Would another candidate been better? You could argue. And uh, we will talk about that, especially when it comes to mm -hmm. the likes of Josh Shapiro. But uh, my, my first impression was, I was surprised, just like you, as you said in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I thought, whoa, because I thought it was 75, 80% chance that it was going to be Josh Shapiro. Why? Because Pennsylvania is a must-win state for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. 
If they don't win Pennsylvania, it's extremely hard to win through the Electoral College in the United States in a presidential election. So they have to win Pennsylvania. And that's why I thought, oh, he's, they've got to go with whatever baggage that Shapiro might have, they've got to go with him. So is this a scared or fearful play? Or is this a confidence play by Kamala Harris? Does she think that she can still win Pennsylvania? And it's not to say that Shapiro is not going to be involved. He's going to probably work tremendously hard within his own state for the Democratic ticket, without a doubt. But there's something about being on the ticket that really puts the stamp on the relationship between the president and the vice president. So it's interesting choice. I had to say my mouth was kind of a little bit wider open. I was just expecting to see Shapiro's name and mm-hmm. to see Tim Waltz because he was a dark horse. There were people two weeks ago that were, I think, four or five people who were in front of him in the pecking order. Then suddenly now he is the pick. What makes him the better pick out of the other names? I mean, it must be more than just the momentum he had with the Q word. What makes him the best possible candidate for this position? I think it's what he represents. He's Midwestern, white, male. He's about 60 years old, looks robust. He looks like an all-around American from the Midwest, but on the progressive side of things. All his votes in Congress really were supporting the middle class. He helped rural communities. He's you know progressive in nature. He has passed gun laws to make it safer as far as background checks go. He cut taxes for working families, supported paid medical leave. So he fits in the progressive wing of things. In fact, as we were talking offline, you wouldn't remember this, but There is a politician from the 60s and early 70s uh, named Hubert Humphrey, who was the vice president of the United States under Lyndon Johnson. And before that, he was senator from Minnesota. And so he really kind of reminds me in a way of him as far as his political record goes. But when you think of Tim Waltz, as far as what I can see now is, he seems a little bit more robust, more relatable. That's what people are saying. He's very relatable. He's got very good communication skills, as did Hubert Humphrey. But, you know, a football coach? I mean, come on, a football coach. Everyone loves a football coach in a way that, you know, when your players love you and want to work and want to play in your team. And I think there's a lot of positivity towards Tim Waltz. But we're just getting to know him. But the early signs are he's very well liked in the Democratic Party of people who know him. But his name recognition is very low. That's going to take a little time to, to develop. But then again, Kamala Harris is doing the same and reintroducing herself to the U.S. voting population. So there is tremendous momentum. I just wondered, is that momentum going to continue after this pick? And because we all thought that it would be Shapiro, we would be riding this wave of, yes, we're going to take Pennsylvania. It would really put a lot of confidence in our sales. But now that's not, that isn't the case. So we'll have to take Kamala Harris's judgment and just respect it and say, she knows something. She is confident about what's going to happen here and her thoughts about winning Pennsylvania. And Mm -hmm. also, we don't know what other skeletons that Shapiro might have had in his background. There's some things that have popped up over the last week or two that might be unfortunate for him. You know, his stance on Israel, although he was very critical of the Netanyahu government, but still he's generally very, very pro-Israel. And that has caused some some problems with the progressive wing of the party. I guess the thing that I'm worried about, though, is he going to win over those suburban women voters in Philadelphia, in Atlanta, and in Milwaukee and other cities. Will that be attractive to them, You know, this, this pick? Will that help? You could argue that Kamala Harris is already making great inroads in that. She's already sort of taken care of that. I think what the play is, what she's trying to do in looking at it long term, is that they're trying to get the white working class voters back to the Democratic Party that they lost under Ronald Reagan going back to the 80s. They, that's when they started losing or leaking white working class people from the Democratic Party. Now, by getting the likes of Tim Waltz, that probably will start turning the tide back to the Democrats. Mm-hmm. So that, that must be the play. But the thing is, what's, what's the number one thing that, you know, they've got to beat Trump. 
you know, in the short term, that's mm -hmm. the main thing. So thinking long term like this is nice, but in the short term, <laughs> number one thing is they've got to be Trump in November. I mean, Harris as a candidate is quite different from Trump anyway. She's uh, younger. She talks more about what she's fighting for, not against. Will Waltz complement that in your eyes? Um, what can he actually do to counter a J.D. Vance, when, whom Trump has picked as his running mate? Yeah, I think that he'll do, his communication skills have really come into fore the last two weeks. We've really seen it. And he's been very critical. In fact, that weird analogy was really directed at J.D. Vance. So I think he'll do quite well against J.D. Vance. And also, he labels the, the MAGA Republicans as, as weird. And I think that sort of works with uh, independents and GOP anti-Trumpers, because they that's what they th feel about their party. It's really been taken over by the MAGA crowd. And it hopefully will give them permission to to vote, lend their vote to Kamala Harris this time, as they did uh, for Biden in 2020. So I think that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing. So will he, will he help? Yeah, I think if he performs the way he's been performing and keeps going, he's got this big likability factor that'll mm -hmm. be uh, interesting to see on the on the campaign trail. So we'll see how that how he performs. But all signs of being a being in Congress as long as he's been and a governor and being a former football coach, just listening to him. I was just doing research and looking at his former speeches and things like that. He performs well. He's very likable. He's relatable. So that has got to be brought out. And that's probably what Kamala Harris has seen in him. But they didn't know each other that well. I don't think didn't work very closely over the last year or two. I think they've just worked a few a few times together. So they they sort of knew each other, but they weren't close. So this is really a, a quick a quick marriage here. Well, we'll uh, see where this leads. I mean, this U.S. election is crucial, not only for the future of this country, but for the future of the entire world, basically. Where do you think Waltz stands towards Europe? Well, I think it'll be the same with, he, he supports what the Democratic Party supports, like very pro-NATO, very pro-Europe, respect of international law. And so I think that he'll really just follow the Democratic Party policies towards towards Europe and international, the rule of law uh, throughout uh, throughout the world. So I suspect he'll be very supportive of our actions in Ukraine. Obviously, there's a, a big development in the Middle East with what's happening in Gaza and Israel. So generally, he's very strong on democratic principles, uh, and he'll be supporting the democratic initiatives that of Kamala Harris internationally. Now it's your turn to ask me. Yeah, and I want to ask you, <laughs> what, what do you think the immediate reaction is uh, uh, coming from Germany and whatever you've seen in, in Europe? Well, uh, it took most people a little bit by surprise, just uh, as it did to you. And the immediate reaction was a bit like, who, what, where, why? But quickly, people got around the idea. They checked up on him. And generally speaking, it's uh, like they warm up to the idea and they are curious, they are interested and more or less a bit positive about the pick. But as I said, it was most people would have uh, said it's a safe bet for Shapiro. And even to me, it would have been the logic choice because I would have thought that they are keeping the electoral arithmetic in mind with Pennsylvania being such a, a crucial state to win. But the majority at the moment talks about it like this was a gut decision of Harris, probably following the current wave of euphoria, and that this is kind of down to um, the moment, they, the momentum they had with this uh, weird Q word. But still, even though it seems like uh, it has been sparked by the momentum, um, and I'm wondering if that is going to last long. But I do think what we got to know so far, that he's this kind of Midwestern dad type and football coach and all that, it seems like it speaks the language of the of the population in the Midwest. Um, so that probably has been a bit of a weak spot for the Democrats in recent years. So that seems to be a good pick for Harris at the moment uh, to fill that gap, you know, counterpart the weakness. So it is 
mostly said and viewed as it is Harry's most cohorted answer to Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance. So basically, it seems like it's good news for the U.S. Democrats, and we'll mm -hmm. see where it leads. Well, I think the Europeans are in the same boat as a lot of Americans. We don't know what the heck we got here. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll uh, we're, we're just discovering ourselves more about Tim Wells. He is the vice president uh, candidate. How critical is the vice president? That's always the question. You hear people say, "Oh, well, it's not that critical." Like even even Donald Trump was dissing his vice presidential pick and J.D. Vance. He was trying to distance himself from what is thought to be one of the most disastrous picks that uh, has been made over the last forty or fifty years in a vice presidential pick. But I think it does matter. Myself, I think it does matter a lot. It says a lot about the ticket and will it move the dial? It doesn't really move the dial that often, but it takes into the whole of the, the political platform and the representation of that party and, uh, and also what they project out as far as will these two people, president and vice president, can they see them representing the, the country, particularly abroad? And you know, when you look at Donald Trump and this J.D. Vance and what he's saying, yes, it does sound very weird. And what, and what is coming out? Like they've, it seems like they've become a little bit even more unhinged. And what you really wanted was some stability. And in their candidate, if I was in a GOP picking the GOP, you want someone who's stable, like a Mike Pence. Mike Pence didn't really move the dial too much, but he was good for Trump with evangelicals. And he looked, even though he had very extreme kind of cultural positions, it seemed like he was an adult which helped him, right? And again, as I said, with evangelicals. But with J.D. Vance, you don't get that feeling at all. You get chaos, mm -hmm. you get extreme right wing, and you also, you don't get authenticity because just a few years before, he was calling him, uh, uh, he was likening him, uh, Donald Trump, to Hitler or like someone who was like the political version of opioid or fentanyl and things like that. You know some really dis really harsh language towards uh, towards mm -hmm. Trump, and now he's done mm -hmm. a complete one eighty, and he's his running mate. So where's the authenticity? Whereas with Tim Waltz, mm -hmm. you get someone who's very authentic, very good on his feet. You know he's coming from, uh, speaking from his heart. So I think those side by side comparisons between the two parties, I'd give the nod to def definitely to Democrats, and uh, as far as winning winning that. Winning that perspective. Well, um, the least we can say is that this U.S. election is keeping all of us on our toes. There are quite some interesting turns coming and going, and well, we are all very interested how things will develop. And we still have a couple of weeks ahead before we all know what's going to happen on the fifth of November. Well. Thank you very much, Dan. That has been very insightful and I appreciate your views. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. It's good to hear. It's good to hear the, the European view as well. <laughs> and thank you, listeners, for tuning in to Over Here, Over There. Please do visit us on our website at www.overhereoverthere.org. Until next time, thank you for listening to Over Here, Over There. Thank you.